right, my phone is precariously balanced on my water bottle and I'm sitting on my bed, so hopefully it does not fall. But welcome to this um, sort of different video than usual on imposter syndrome. I'm gonna start this off commercial style, I guess, like asking you questions as the viewer, I don't know. Um, but do you believe that your accomplishments are based on luck or that you have like a tenuous grip on your life while everyone else is just cruising by smoothly? Do you feel like the comments that you make in a group are more ignorant than other people's comments? Do you feel like you don't deserve praise? Are you motivated by a fear of failure? And do you often feel as though you're improvising life as you go? If you answered yes to some uh, one or a lot of those questions, that could mean that you have what is called imposter syndrome. And I think a lot of people have heard about it. It's essentially this idea that one feels fraudulent in their workplace or classroom environment um, with feelings of inadequacy, doubt, uh, stress, when really they're performing completely fine and they're just overanalyzing their every move to the point that they have imposter syndrome. And it's very real, it can get very serious, um, especially at colleges, the workplace. I know that it's very prevalent here at the University of Chicago. Um, I think I've dealt with it myself. I think I have, but that's like imposter syndrome in itself. Like, do we know if we're dealing with it? We might, you know, say, oh, I don't have imposter syndrome. I'm just overanalyzing my own feelings of overanalyzing, if that makes sense. I don't know where I'm going with this, okay. But the bottom line is that when you have imposter syndrome, you feel like the odd one out. You feel like you're the only one who doesn't understand something or is worse than everyone else. And it's not a good thing to have, but I also discovered that there's a lot more to it than I originally knew. And it's actually very interesting to research. By the way, I've cited like my sources in the caption below if you wanna read through those or check them out. So first of all, who does it affect? Most of the time, the people with imposter syndrome are those that are high achievers. They're perfectionists, their stresses are exacerbated by societal, social, or parental pressure. That being said, it can go much deeper than this. People who are in the LGBTQ community, um, racial minorities, or marginalized communities, these are all people who can be negatively impacted by imposter syndrome because it might be harder for them to receive validation at their school or in the workplace than it is for other people. In regards to gender, according to like 33 studies, 16 of them found that women are statistically more likely to have imposter syndrome, but 17 said that there was no significant difference between men and women. So um, it's not entirely certain, I guess, whether or not there is a difference in gender between imposter syndrome. But the point is here that people who have less insecurities and just appear more confident, people will think of them as more intelligent. This is not to say though that cis white males will not experience imposter syndrome because saying that a certain group is not as likely to be impacted by imposter syndrome is in itself a way of not validating that group and making it harder for them to express that they do have imposter syndrome if they have it. Anyway, I'm going on a tangent again. I am so sorry. But the next question is, how does it affect us? How does imposter syndrome actually make an impact on our lives? It's often accompanied by depression and anxiety and you can identify imposter syndrome with feelings of stress, um, anxiousness, nervousness, inadequacy, the things I listed before. But the thing about this is it's not just those feelings of self-doubt, but it's always characterized by that other feeling of being the only person with those doubts or being worse than everyone else. So the consequential effect is that Imposter syndrome can be very isolating, even if you're not the only one with imposter syndrome. There can also be long-term effects that will ultimately affect your job satisfaction and your burnout, your performance. Um, it can also cause unhealthy perfectionism because for example, let's say I work on a project for 10 hours and I get a really good grade on it. That's instilling in me that I need to do a lot of work into every single thing that I do. And if I don't put all of my willpower into one project, then I'll feel like it's bad and it's not worthy to turn in. So unhealthy perfectionism is fueled by imposter syndrome. But what can help it? Um, how can we get past this? A lot of it is mental, um, training yourself to think differently. But you can talk with groups, talk with your peers. This is very therapeutic for imposter syndrome because the pluralization of isolation from believing that no one else experiences imposter syndrome can be combated by these group discussions because then you can realize other people feel the same way that I do and you'll understand you're not the only one. So this is immensely helpful. Also talk with your mentors, understand better what your expectations are so you don't feel like you're overworking yourself. Maybe you'll even get a better idea of how you're valued in the workplace so that you don't feel as inadequate. Instead of talking with your mentors, you can also talk with people below you. Um, that's younger people, people who are working towards your job because when you share your expertise with people who look up to you, 
it makes you recognize your own validation even more. Also, just ask for help and don't take on everything by yourself. But if you're like me and you don't like talking to other people about your issues because um, it's awkward for some people like me, um, then there are also more personal things you can do, such as writing down a list of all the things you're naturally good at and things that you worked towards to get good at. And this is because imposter syndrome also often comes hand in hand with not um, talking about recognizing or um, appreciating your own talents and skills. So just by writing those down, you might better understand um, how you are actually doing very well at what you do and that you're not bad like you think you are. Also, just stop judging yourself. This sounds like terrible advice because it's way easier said than done. And if it were that simple, then no one would have imposter syndrome. But the thing is, is a mindset is ingrained. We can't change it with the flip of a switch. You've got to work towards it. With each thought you have, you have to challenge it and make sure that you are thinking that with the correct mindset. So if you stop judging yourself, enforce yourself to look back and say, maybe I should not focus on these attributes of myself, but these positive attributes, then you can slowly instill in yourself something new that's going to ultimately, hopefully, replace your imposter syndrome. In general, we just need to address it as a global issue and not an individual issue. This is the issue with imposter syndrome, is we need to make sure people know that it's general and we can't just be like slapping a band-aid on it, like, oh shoot, okay, another person has imposter syndrome, here's what you can do to feel better. We need to make sure that our environments are better to work in. We need to make sure that our classrooms are better for people to learn in. There was a really good quote from an article that I read, and this is from the article called Contextualizing the Imposter Syndrome, and I just wanna quickly read it to you because it's very profound. We propose a shift in how scholars conceptualize and empirically examine this phenomenon. Instead of framing the insecurities of individuals belonging to marginalized groups solely as a problem that arises within these individuals, we argue that it is critical for future research to consider the important role of the environment in eliciting their imposter feelings as well. Fundamentally, uncertainties are to be expected. To a certain degree, we are all imposters because does anyone truly know what they're doing? And honestly, reflecting on this might help as well with imposter syndrome to just understand that no one knows exactly what they're doing. Like, to a certain extent, we're all just floundering in certain situations and trying our best to look good and to feel good, to sound smart, uh, to be smart, to be strong. So just know that when you go about your daily routine or if you go to work, when you go to school, that you're not alone. Everyone else has feelings of self-doubt and most importantly, like you are definitely better than you are perceiving yourself to be. I hope that this has helped, even if it's in a minimal way, um, to at least understand imposter syndrome, um, who it affects, why it's an issue. Anyway, I don't want this video to get too long. It's probably already getting a little bit long. I have no idea. But thank you so much for watching. Please take the time to recognize your own skills and talents that you have. And I hope that you have a spectacular rest of your week.